Hi, today we're looking at photographing seeker deer and this is my favourite place in the UK to do seeker deer. It's the Knoll Deer Park in Kent and the reason I like it so much is it's just very photogenic. It's got some lovely open areas, some nice woodland areas, nice glades uh, and, and around the golf course, uh, not down the fairway itself, the grass there is too short but to the side of the fairway, the rough area, that's just perfect because the grass is not too long that it hides the deer but it doesn't look like a lawn either. It's a very natural looking environment and there's sort of rolls in the land and when the seeker deer stand on top of those rolls it sort of separates them from the background and just makes a, a nice place for them to stand. It's an introduced species of deer to the UK, it comes from Asia and most of them are in deer parks but some have escaped and there are some that have been released as well so you can get them at Living Wild and Arn in Dorset, the Findhorn Valley in Scotland and the Boland Forest apparently although I've never seen them there but mostly it is a deer park deer and a particularly attractive one and the, the, the coat can vary quite a lot and it varies through the seasons but it also varies with different races of seeker deer. They came from quite a variety of different countries in, in Asia uh, but most of the ones that are in Britain I believe are the Japanese variety of seeker deer and I photographed them in Japan. I've been to Japan three times so I've done them in the snow in the winter there. Um, but the coat I always think is, is one of the most attractive of our deers. Lovely dark chestnutty colours in them. They do rut and it is around the same time the red deer and the fallow deer rut. Apparently they can start earlier, this is mid-September at the moment, they could be rutting but I've seen no sign of it, they're not interacting with each other, the males are not fighting and you can see that the males are following the females around to a degree but it's nothing very dramatic. An alternative name for the seeker deer is spotted deer and in the summer coat they are covered in spots but the coat does vary throughout the seasons and it's not always that easy to tell which deer species you're looking at. You can confuse them with fallow deer and red deer and in fact with the red deer they do interbreed to the degree that there are some people claim there is no purebred red deer left in the UK mainland. The white mark on the rear leg, lower part of the leg, that's a distinguished mark to tell you you're definitely looking at seeker deer and the tail is shorter than a fallow deer too. The young are born in May so this is mid-September so it's quite well grown. Today marks a change in my settings on my Sony A1. I've had this a few months now and ever since I've owned it I've been sticking to auto ISO primarily because it's so popular today everybody seems to be shooting auto ISO but I've decided to give up on it. I just can't get used to it. It's just not the way I'm used to thinking. After 50 years of shooting aperture priority, it's hard to change and do something different. Aperture priority just seems to suit me better. There's no right or wrong. You can be shutter speed priority, aperture priority, order ISO, what does it matter? You all get the same, but just all aperture priority just seems more natural to me because I'm just so used to it. And I still don't think quickly enough when I'm doing auto ISO but there we go when I want the fastest shutter speed I just open up my aperture wide with the front dial and when I have two turnstones standing side by side but one further back than the other I need more depth of field to get them both sharp I just close the aperture down a little bit and that's more or less all that I do I'm leaving the ISO set at 1600 which to me seems incredibly fast but then I grew up on 64 ISO film so anything seems fast after that. I don't feel the need to go down to 800 or 400 ISO because I can't see any improvement. The noise level doesn't improve as I slow down the ISO. 1600 is my default setting. Very happy to go faster, but I don't feel the need to go slower than 1600 with this particular camera. So that's my new settings and I've already saved them as the custom setting one. So I just turned the top dial to one now and that's my default settings. This youngster did attempt to suckle a couple of times but the female walked away from him and by the beginning of October he should be weaned.
nice to get them amongst the bracken where it acts as a prop. On this occasion I did remember to turn the eye tracking to mammals rather than birds. I usually forget and it doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference although recently when I was photographing roe deer I noticed that it wasn't picking up on the eye of the roe deer. It could have been because the light was particularly poor but when I remember I do put it to the mammal setting. This is the lovely chestnutty brown that I talked about in the plumage. Lovely colours. Neither shutter speed nor aperture makes a great deal of difference when you're photographing something like this. Could be almost any aperture, any shutter speed. If they would start to fight or chase each other, then I need a faster shutter speed. And if I was photographing a large group, I might need to close the aperture down to get more depth of field. But otherwise, when a deer is just standing there, it could be two hundredth of a second, two thousandth of a second, you just wouldn't see any difference. The camera angle, that makes a difference. And you can see here, I've gone down to floor level. Throws that background further away, puts it out of focus, makes the deer look bigger, more dramatic. Getting down on the floor always seems to help a lot with your photography. And just a couple of pictures taken in Japan on the northern island of Hokkaido. It's a wonderful place for winter wildlife photography. I've been there three times now, always enjoy it. And the seeker deer are just as tame there as they are at the Knoll Deer Park. This is back at the Knoll Deer Park, the only occasion I managed to get some backlit shots. But this is the golf course area where I mentioned they stand on the roof to the side of the fairway. So these were taken a few years ago, I wasn't lucky on the day I went to make this film. But it's just a lovely place for them to stand. And obviously a bit later on in the year, got no spots on the coats now. And just interacting with each other. Lovely settings. Thanks for watching.